All right, folks, it's 11.59. Feels like as good a time as any to get started. Um, my name is Joel Lowski. I'm the Director of Academic and Industry Relations with Aspen Dental Management. Aspen Dental Management is the dental support organization that supports the 820-something Aspen Dental branded practices across the country in basically all business facets minus the clinical element of it. Um, I myself am on the human resources team on a subset called talent acquisition and I'm thrilled to uh, have the privilege to host these sessions which we do almost every week. This one is a particularly special one as we are focusing on uh, hygiene and hygienists. Um, it's an area of, of the field that's close to my heart and I'm happy to have a hygienist on my team uh, who worked for 19 years in a private practice regularly asked, I want more, I'd like more, what else can I do? Um, and was told regularly, you're doing great on the hygiene, please keep it up. Um, she joined Aspen Dental and within a year, she was on my team. She's now uh, an amazing asset on our team. She builds relationships with dental schools across the country. Her name is Holly Farbo uh, and she's wonderful. And that's my tiny little story um, of success at Aspen Dental that I can share. Um, and having said that, I, I, I much prefer to pass on the spotlight to our guests, um, four folks who've taken time out from their day, and one of them is even at practice on their lunch, and I'm sure you could guess who that is. Uh, and we'll start with Amber. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hey, how are you? Um, I'm Amber Lombardi. I am a dental hygienist for Aspen Dental in South Portland, Maine. Um, I have been with Aspen a little over a year. Um, I am also a independent uh, public health hygienist for the in the state of Maine and I um, went to school a little bit about me I went to I uh, got my associates at University of New Haven in Connecticut in 2012 and then I got my bachelor's at University of New England um, in 2017 2018 and I um, am currently pursuing my master's in public health um, and at University of New England. And I um, work right now part-time for Aspen and I absolutely love it here. Um, I also work part-time doing my public health as an oral health coordinator for the state and also uh, per diem at the universe, local university teaching clinically. Um, please feel free to ask me any questions and I'm very happy to be here and excited to speak with everyone. Thank you, Amber. Britt? It's gonna be hard to follow. Um, my name is Britt Short. I am a territory manager for hygiene support with Aspen Dental. Um, I have, so I started out as a dental assistant and became a dental hygienist in 2011. I went to Lewis and Clark College in Illinois um, and then worked clinically as a hygienist for about seven years uh, before stepping into the role that I'm in now um, with Aspen about two years ago. So um, I finished my bachelor's degree um, I was in, about two years ago in uh, corporate communications and uh, have used that in this role. Um, I, my role, I'm truly just hygienist like Amber. I'm, I'm their direct support, their partnership with um, any and all things clinical. And a lot of the time I'm hands-on with them and I get to hang out in the trenches. I look a lot like Amber looks like right now mm -hmm. um, whenever I'm in the offices. So um, full-time territory manager and then full-time dog mom. So that's, that's all about me. Thank you, Britt. Kaylee? Hi guys, I'm Kaylee Dolan. Um, I am Senior Director of Hygiene Support. So I get the pleasure of working with Britt Short. Um, how I got started with hygiene, I um, graduated from Lakeland College in Mattoon, Illinois, from Southern Illinois originally, and came on to Aspen after about six months of working in private practice, worked as a clinical hygienist in our Mattoon, Illinois office, shout out to that team, um, for about four years. And then I started working on my bachelor's degree in organizational and professional development, um, became the hygiene manager, territory hygiene manager of support over Illinois and Indiana, 
um, quickly grew into a director of hygiene and I was up in our northern states where it's a little bit too cold for my taste, um, working with Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, the Dakotas, um, and then became a senior director of hygiene where I'm now in the Midwest. Um, and I actually live in Boone, Iowa now. So this is home for me. And like Britt said, I'm a dog mom of two. And then I've got a little girl named Sadie. And last but not least, we always forget to mention our husbands. Um, married to my husband now five years. Thanks, Kaylee. Uh, Jen, go ahead. We have so many dog moms. Are there any kitty moms out there? <laughs> I'm a dog mom also. I'm a dog grandma. Um, my name is, <laughs> my name is uh, Jan LeBeau. Um, I am the Vice President of Hygiene Support for the West for Aspen. Um, my responsibilities with Aspen being the VP of the West is everything in the U.S. with the exception of the Eastern Seaboard. So kind of funny how Aspen defines the West, but uh, that's basically what uh, my overarching responsibility is. I graduated from my hygiene program in 1984. So I've been a hygienist 36 years. Um, I've played a lot of different roles in this profession. Um, I went on after hygiene school to also complete and finish my bachelor's. Uh, and then uh, after that, I uh, have a business certificate in uh, leadership and management for the dental professional out of uh, USC. So that's kind of uh, my education. I practiced 15 years as a chairside hygienist before I went into the business of hygiene. When I left hygiene, I actually went into um, sales and marketing and had uh, quite a career at Nobel BioCare. Um, it was... Uh, I believe in the late 90s when I left Nobel BioCare, early 2000s, and did a few other little things and then ended up in the DSO world uh, where I was a, uh, started with Pacific Dental Services, which is a wonderful DSO that's primarily on the West Coast. I was with them 11 years. I led their hygiene department and recently uh, left them and came over to Aspen for another opportunity. And I've been with Aspen now for about eight months. So that's kind of my background. Um, I'm a dog mom for sure, just like you guys, but uh, I have um, two daughters. Uh, my youngest daughter is a dental hygienist. Actually, she's a senior dental hygienist who couldn't join us today because she's taking her national board exams. So she Oh, yay. That's so exciting. Senior Nationals today, we should have a moment of silence for them. Uh, that they <laughs> do well. uh, and uh, my daughters have blessed me with three grandchildren now. So that's my story. Well, thanks, everyone. Uh, I, I'm a dog dad three times over, but enough about me. Um, so just a reminder for any of you who have joined, we're using the Q&A feature at the bottom of your Zoom window and you can feel free to submit questions there. Um, I'm gonna, uh, you'll see me moving back and forth. I've got two lists of questions and I move around a lot. Uh, and just a reminder, we call these sessions AMA, that stands for Ask Me Anything. Uh, and really there are no questions that are off the table. Um, and we try to encourage the difficult questions because we want to encourage an open dialogue. So there's really nothing off the table here. Um, and so in that, in that uh, vein, we're going to start with uh, a little bit of an interesting question. So the question is, why would I want to leave my private practice doctor after 10 years? Um, Amber, would you like to try that one? Yeah, that's difficult. I mean, um... If uh, I think for me, I was very pleasantly surprised. So one thing I didn't mention was I grew up in a family of dentists. I've worked in dental offices, not totally by choice my whole life. Um, I used to teach early childhood education and I have, I realized after that teeth are my passion. Um, so I was, I was raised in private practice and um, when I came to Aspen, I was really, um, really surprised and really pleasantly surprised at um, how I really like the flow of the office, which is can be very different than what you're used to in a private practice, um, at least the ones I worked in over the years. Um, I really liked that they were really up on all their guidelines. They were following all the AAP guidelines that we were giving patients top care that we were really doing very thorough exams on our patients and really treating um, 
you know, oral disease and overall health. Um, so for me, I wasn't, uh, I moved away from where my family's from and I'm raising my family in another state. And so for me, I, I had worked at a few private practices that just, I, I felt like um, they weren't doing enough for, their pa for the patients. And, and I had a really hard time, you know, ethically with that, morally with that, on my oath. Um, and so for me, moving to Aspen, coming to Aspen has been a really positive um, experience. And I, for me, it was a good move because I felt like I was getting, giving my patients the best care as possible here. Thanks, Amber. Uh, Britt, do you, do, you, do you have anything to add on that? Why would I want to leave my private practice doctor after 10 years? Yeah, so I worked for a private practice myself, and I can't say anything negative about the experience. Um, however, whenever I trans, you know, transitioned over to working for a DSO, I cannot um, say how thankful I am for not only the, the benefits that we get, um, honestly, having the support that we have in, you know, in this community, but also, you know, access to uh, continuing education. It's literally right at our fingertips. Um, I can't tell you how many times that's been, oh crap, you know, I have to, I have to get, you know, re redo my license and I don't have all the CEs that I need. And then I just pop on the, you know, internet that we have and can just take a couple classes to make sure that I fulfill that need. Um, but I, I, I can say that there are definitely going to be some of those private practices where it's your family and you want to stay there forever. And, and those are still going to exist, but there's definitely a family aspect in Aspen that I truly, and I, you know, I feel is very strong as well. Great. Thank you. Jan or Kaylee, anything to add? Yeah, so I think that um, you guys have done an awesome job summing it up. I also think the growth and development. So this is something that I'm huge on. Um, I feel like sometimes whenever we are in those private practices for 10 years, we've hit our max. So what else is out there for us? And so being able to grow your career with Aspen and just seeing all these lovely women in front of you that have taken their career to the next level, that's always an option. And if you aren't interested in the business side, there's always the option to become a lead hygienist where you're still in a leadership role and you're still growing and developing yourself. So I think that's huge and a great aspect that we can offer. Can I add one more thing? Sorry. <laughs> sure, go ahead, Amber. Um, and for me, the other, um, the other thing that has been really great is um, I have several interests. I have specialty interests and Aspen, when I was working in a private practice, my schedule was not flexible. Um, and at, I, they have been very flexible with me here. So it's helped me fulfill my passions. And also I feel like I do have a family here and they've been very supportive of me. Thank you. That's where I was gonna go. The sense of community that you have, being in a private practice can be somewhat isolating um, when you're working within an organization like Aspen, um, the sense of community and communication with your colleagues and, and working with other hygienists and, and learning from each other, um, it, it's another aspect of working with a, a large organization that will pull um, you know, uh, Aspen hygienists from all different offices and regions together for um, not only CE opportunity, but for collaboration with each other. So the sense of community that you get working in an organization like this is also beneficial. Thank you, Jan. Um, folks, just so you know, I try to combine multiple questions that are similar, um, either into one question or into one uh, thematically linked topic so that we can focus on it for a little while. Um, there are there seems to be a lot of questions about growth opportunities um, within Aspen Dental. So we're going to sort of dive right into those. Uh, I'm a hygienist interested in a non-clinical position. Does Aspen Dental have any non-clinical clinical positions available that hygienists can apply for? Um, so I don't think we're going to talk specifically about any open positions, but perhaps you can talk a little bit about some of those non-clinical positions that are available. Jan, would you like to start with that one? Sure. Actually, I think um, I'm going to hand this one off to Kaylee, and here's why. Um, Kaylee has grown through the organization from chairside hygienist all the way up to senior director and is actually positioned to move into VP at some point as well. So Kaylee, I'm going to hand this off to you because you have really come through the organization. 
Thanks, Jan. Um, there are just an abundant amount of opportunities and it really depends where you want to take your career. Um, so obviously we have all these different levels of hygiene support, which um, help support the clinicians, help support the doctors and the owners, um, not necessarily chair side every day. So whenever you look at Britt, she is going into the offices and she's supporting and she does help, whether it be somebody needs help with local anesthetic or antibiotics, whatever it may be. And then my role takes a little bit step further back even more where I'm supporting the schools and the brand and really getting out there and working with the students and the dental associations and things like that, that I'm super passionate about. And then we've got Jan who, oh my gosh, she does it all. <laughs> you do it all. Um, and that's just the hygiene team. So we also have these branches, whether it be an office manager, a regional manager. Um, we have Holly who goes to our schools and does nothing but helps support our schools, um, whether it be bowling events or help with boards patients. Um, we have new office recruitment teams that go and help open brand new practices. So there are unlimited possibilities. I know I'm missing a ton of opportunities that are out there. And honestly, I sometimes don't even know about them. I hear about positions that we have in the company. I'm like, who oh, no, knew? I didn't even know that was an option. So there is endless opportunities. And I would say, get your foot in the door. Come to us. Let us know you want to grow and we'll, we'll grow you. We've got all these opportunities and we want to help you become more. We have hygienists in positions on the ortho team. We have hygienists that have a uh, passion for learning and development that are working with our learning and development. Um, and interestingly, our chief operations officer, our COO, Lori Deanna, started with this organization back in the 90s as a, actually she started as a dental assistant and then went on to hygiene school and is, um, what would you say, Joel? COO is right under our CEO, so she's second in command, and her background is hygiene. Now, I'm not saying that all of us are going to track in that direction. I mean, that's a pretty unusual career path, um, uh, but it exists. The opportunity exists at Aspen Dental for anything that you're passionate around. Thank you. So here's a question about the, the path that one might take. Um, the question is, uh, I want to explore a role outside of clinical dental hygiene, and I've been out of the office since the COVID shutdown. Do I have a higher chance of having an opportunity uh, as a director, for example, if I'm currently practicing as a chairside hygienist? Jan, you want to take that one? <laughs> well, it's, it's uh, I don't know, you know, it, it it depends on your, um, the opportunities available. Um, you don't have to come into Aspen Dental as a chairside hygienist and work yourself up. Certainly I didn't, I, I came from a DSO over. Um, so it depends on the opportunity available, but I will tell you by and large, most of um, the positions with that Aspen do start at the chairside. Uh, uh, as a lead hygienist. As a lead hygienist, you really own your hygiene business within the practice and, and you really learn, that's where you get your feet wet and really learn about the business of hygiene um, and how that ties into the clinical side and the clinical excellence that we bring. Um, so while I would say no, you don't have to start as a chairside hygienist, I would say that it's, it's probably how most of our dental hygiene support team did start. Thank you. Um, so what would you say mentorship looks like for a hygienist? Uh, and perhaps, um, Kaylee, you want to take that one? Yeah. So I think mentorship for a hygienist, and my background's in training and development, so this is like my passion from the get-go, is really just figuring out where opportunities are. So Britt, your hygiene manager, she works directly with the hygienist and you voice it up to her and say, hey, I wanna grow, I wanna develop. And so Britt takes an inventory, figures out what your goals are, um, maybe what your strengths are as a leader, and then we start building on those. Whether it's, we get you into different conferences, we get you a book to read, we get you into any type of training and development, just to help you grow and understand the business more. And then we have the opportunity too, to get you into some of the meetings that we're in or some of the trainings or the classes that we do. So um, that's really what Britt and I's job is to help you grow and become more and help you achieve those goals. Britt, you can probably elaborate a little bit more too, except on specific situations. 
Yeah, I think you said it best with the communication. I think whenever we have hygienists that are interested in growing, maybe not even, and maybe, you know, they're sick of hygiene, they want to go into just strictly operations or maybe that's, you know, school relations, whatever it is, the communication's there. And, and I feel like um, because we've grown in the positions that we're in, it, the, the hygienists really feel comfortable saying, hey, I'm interested in doing this too. And telling us what, you know, communicating what they are interested in, and then we can kind of help them get into that into that career path, if that makes a little bit more sense. But I know, um, I, I would say it happens often. I think a lot of the hygienists that do join Aspen, um, even if they came in not wanting to grow, after they see what it's like and see, you know, maybe their strengths, so they find out what they, um, what they're, I guess, most interested in, um, then, you know, they, they embark on that career path and, and we support them through it. So it's definitely a, a positive of working for, a company that has those positions available. So here's a question that's sort of, oh, I'm sorry, Kaylee. <laughs> sorry, Joel, I didn't mean to interrupt. I just wanted to share, um, I came to Aspen when I was 20 years old. I was 20 years old whenever I graduated hygiene and I was a baby, y'all. I had no idea what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. And Maureen took me under her wing and I never knew that I wanted to be in the position that I'm in, but having somebody that sees your strengths and helps you build those is huge. And I'm going to get emotional about it because it's been life changing for me. So if you're questioning it, do it. It's the best decision you'll make. Thank you, Kaylee. So we have a little contest. I do these almost every week and we try to see who we can get to cry first. <laughs> so Kaylee wins for this week. Um, so here's a question that sort of goes the, the opposite direction. We, we uh, and I appreciate that folks are asking these questions. Um, uh, you, the members of the panel have, have had a tremendous growth. Is this a good position for someone that only wants to work chair side as a hygienist? Um, so Amber, would you like to comment on that? Um, I don't, I don't think that this is a position that um, I think there's like, they've been talking about so many options. Um, I think that, I mean, I, I feel personally that, if I wanted to grow, I, I could. Um, I feel like I have that support. Um, I feel like I have learned so much. Uh, I've continued as much education that I'm always involved in outside of here. I've learned so much being here. They've offered me so much continued education. So no, I think that, um, I definitely think that it, it's, you can come into this wanting to be one thing and end up doing something else like they've all said. Um, I hope that answered the question and I hope I heard it correctly. Yes, thank you. Would anybody else like to comment maybe uh, if anybody has a story sort of about uh, a dedicated or lifelong chair side uh, hygienist at Aspen? Well, we I have, have a, just some hygienist. input. Oh, Dan. Now go ahead, Britt. I'll let you. <laughs> Um, I just want to say one of one of my hygienists, I was actually just in uh, one of the offices where the hygienist has been there for so long. She um, is getting ready to get her associate hygienist hired because that office is growing and they need more hands on deck. Uh, she's really excited about being lead, but she does not want to do anything other than hygiene. And honestly, if it was if it was my opinion, I, I would say that she belongs where exactly where she's at. Uh, but one thing she said to me, which I thought stood out really well was, how she was very, um, she was, she was very appreciative that we walk in, we're like, don't you want to be this? Like, you're just a hygienist. We never say you're just a hygienist because that's not what the organization looks at. The, the clinicians that are out there, you know, in the forefront, you know, dressed up in PPE, like, like Amber is right now, that it's not seen just because there's opportunity. It's not that you're at, you know, you're just anything. Um, you just may be amazing at that role and that's exactly where you belong. So, but whenever she said that she appreciated that we walked in with having as much respect for every position from the dental assistants to the, the hygienist to the lab techs, um, it really made her feel just, you know, so appreciative of her support staff. So I just wanted to add that. You know, and, 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 and I would like to add the way that our organization works. I mean, Amber is chairside. She's caring for these patients. And Brittany, who goes in to support the hygienist, she works for Amber. And Kaylee, Kaylee works for Brittany because Brittany's supporting 
or I mean, Kaylee supporting Brittany, who's going in and, and empowering Amber to deliver the highest quality of care we can for the patients we serve. And at the end of the day, I work for Kaylee. So while you see the organization go from chairside RDH to a territory hygiene manager to a, a senior director to a VP, it's, re it's actually turned on its head in this organization because the most important role held in this organization within the hygiene department is the chairside hygienist. We have, uh, I spoke with a hygienist in the Midwest yesterday or the day before yesterday, who is a lead hygienist. Um, she's kind of traveled from office to office to open new offices or to help um, a mentor hygienist to develop other offices. And I talked to her about a potential role coming from chairside into more of the support team. And her answer was, no, thank you. I'm perfect, perfectly fit where I'm at. I love my patients. She's been with Aspen Dental 14 or 15 years. Um, she loves her patients. She loves her doctor. And she doesn't want to leave chairside dental practice. And that is absolutely heartwarming and beautiful when we see this. Um, you know, I, I was 15 years as a chairside hygienist, then went into the business of hygiene. I will tell you, I very much miss chairside hygiene. I, I do. I miss that connection. I miss my patients. I think um, um, it wasn't my role. I needed to grow, as I think Britt and Kaylee will tell you as well. Um, but if you really ask Brittany and Kaylee if they miss their patients chairside as well, I think they'll miss that part of their career as well. So... Um, so there's lots of opportunities in lots of different directions. It just depends on what you want and what your aspirations and what your passions are. Thanks, everyone. Um, you, you spoke there about sort of uh, Britt works for Kaylee and Kaylee works for you. Um, at, uh, for the hygienist, for the boots on the ground hygienist, um, do they work for the DSO, for Aspen Dental Management, or do they work for the doctor uh, and their private practice? Great point to draw out. The, uh, the chairside hygienist, the clinical team works for the doctor and the doctor owns the practice. Within the DSO model, and, and sometimes we blur those lines a little bit in our verbiage only is what I mean. Um, the DSO, the ADMI, Aspen Dental Management, really provides the business support for the practice, but the doctor owns the practice and sets all of the clinical direction and the clinical team works for the doctor. We at Aspen Dental, ADMI, support the clinical team at the direction of the doctor when it comes to anything clinical. Make no mistake, and this is probably a big mistake made within the perception of DSOs for those that haven't been involved in a DSO. The, the clinical direction comes from the owner doctor. It does not come from the business side, the ADMI, the management side. Um, we provide the management, the business support. The doctor defines the clinical support. So the, in answer to your question, Joel, sorry, I keep going around on this. The hygienist works for the doctor. And the doctor empowers us to come in and support the hygiene team based on his or her clinical direction. Thank you, Jen. Um, uh, uh, sorry, folks. Also, keep an eye, if you, if you will, on the q and I'm trying to type some answers to questions whenever I can. Uh, so there might be some answers in there for you. Um, so there's, there's a few more questions about career path, but we'll, we'll come back to that. There's an awful lot of questions in the queue, and I want to make sure we get to everybody. Um, so let's talk sort of about what life is like inside the practice. How many hygienists uh, are in one office and, and uh, how does the office flow on an average day? Uh, I guess that means what's the, what's the patient uh, load look like? Um, I can chime in for Thanks. my personal experience, if you would like. Um, so I know that my, uh, the great thing about Aspen is that I, am given the freedom to basically design my own schedule. Um, and the way, you know, like they mentioned, they are privately owned. Um, so my doctor, I work with my doctor and my um, office manager 
to create a schedule that works for everybody. Um, but you know, I'm able to book out the time frames that I feel that I need to provide the care, the best care for all of my patients. Um, the flow um, is a little bit different, like I mentioned, than maybe what you're used to in private practice because hygienists do also help with um, treatment planning new patients. But there is another, you know, when people hear this, sometimes they get, they think, oh, how is that even possible? But the schedules are built with that in mind. And I've never felt out of time or pressured or um, like I was, you know, just not able to do my job. Um, and so we um, help probe and chart and talk about treatment plans with, and work with the doctors on treatment plans um, for new patients. So my job as a hygienist is to um, assess the patient for their hygiene needs. Um, that being said, I've always felt very supported in uh, making my schedule if I've ever had any questions. I work very closely with my doc and with my office manager and with um, my hygiene manager. And I, I have never had any issues with that, with the flow. Thank you, Amber. Uh, anybody else want to comment on that? Uh, I, I've got some other questions in the same category, so you don't all have to dive in at once. I'd like to comment. I was going to add um, one thing, especially whenever I'm talking to new candidates that are interested in coming on with Aspen is uh, I like to let them know that whenever you start, you go through training, you go through this two week mandatory training, whether you've been a hygienist for 10 years or you're straight out of high, of hygiene school. And that that training is, is not teaching you how to hi be a hygienist. We're, we're already hiring competent hygienists because you've already had your training. However, it, it's truly for you to get an idea, not only of their computer system, but really to figure out your clinical preferences. And with that, you actually, you get to fill out a clinical preference sheet that the whole office that you're gonna end up working in will get um, that lets them know, hey, I need, because I'm jumping out of maybe a profi, maybe a profi should, you know, typically only takes you about 45 minutes because you know you're going to jump out to see a new patient, maybe you want an hour for that. Just so, like Amber said, you can, you know, kind of accommodate throughout the day for the schedule needs. So um, a lot of the times if I have a hygienist, it's, you know, maybe they've come to me saying they are, you know, not sure if they could pop out to see the, the new patient column, like Amber had explained. Um, we just revisit their clinical preference sheet and can kind of cater that to whatever they need. So. Thank you. Um... Since this is a, a question that was submitted uh, from the online forum, since most of your patients uh, you see a day are new, uh, and you guys can comment on whether or not that's accurate, uh, I assume a lot of time is spent taking radiographs. Do other staff help taking radiographs, or is it solely the hygienist? Uh, and do most patients have radiographs they transfer from other dentists? I can speak on how my practice is run here. Um, and there are, so. I would just want to make sure that I'm answering all of those questions. So first thing, new, um, the new patient schedule is, I mean, we're seeing new patients. We have, diff we have different rooms for different things, like in every office. So we have a few, hy two hygiene, hygiene chairs going all day. We have um, either one or two doc chairs, depending on how many dentists we have um, that day. And then we have a new patient chair running. Um, and... Hi, the hygienists are not, in my office, not responsible um, for taking the new patient x-rays unless, say, I had a cancellation and maybe they needed a, a little extra help. I would obviously step in. We do a lot of teamwork here. Um, but um, the, the dental assistants in Maine um, are, have a licensure to take x-rays, and they are responsible for taking the x-rays, seating the patient, and then that's when... I would come in and do my assessment and treatment planning, and then the doc would come in and do their assessment and treatment planning. Um, and was there another question in that? I'm trying to make sure that I hit all of them. There was another question. It's a bit of a generality, but do most patients have radiographs that they transfer from other dentists? Uh, not, not necessarily. Um, I, we have found that a handful of them do just, I feel like, just like any other practice, but also um, because a lot of our new patient screenings are 
no charge. Uh, we do a full, you know, full mouth series, a pan at that visit free of charge um, and give them a whole treatment plan. They're walking out with all of it and it's, it's an extensive treatment plan and they get to pick and choose like what, you know, what they, they want to proceed with and what they don't want to proceed with. So a lot of times we do, we, we welcome, you know, folks bringing, having their x-ray sent if they did, obviously we don't want to expo expose them more if they don't need to be. Um, but we do tend to take more x-rays just because people just opt to have that done. Um, but it is up to the patient um, ultimately to make if they've recently had x-rays and they want to have them retaken. Thank you. Um, does the does every new patient see a hygienist on their first visit? Yes, that is the ideal situation. Um, and we've we uh, either myself or the other hygienist that's here will go in and always sit down and talk to the patient. We take the time with them. We'll do all their their charting, probing. Um, we talk to them about what our findings are. Um, we ask them if they have any questions. We uh, talk to them. I mean, I know I address brushing habits and health habits and um, it's, and the more you do it, the, the easier. Amber is so excited about that answer. She got stuck in the middle of it. <laughs> Joel, I can add to that too. I think um, I, I cut think... out. I'm sorry. <laughs> my, my connection. Can you hear me now? Um, so yes, uh, the hygienist does have a, does go in and see, a hygienist goes in and sees every patient. Thank you. I'm sorry, Kayla, what were you going to say? I was just going to add to that um, literally every patient. So I think there's an opportunity to educate. And whenever you think of a hygienist in our roles, we're clinicians, yes, but B, we're teachers, we're educators. And so I even think about those denture patients. You're like, why would a hygienist need to see a denture patient? This is a great opportunity for us. Oral cancer is on the rise, guys. I teach a CE on this, and so I can get super passionate. But think about it. They're going to get their dentures. They're going to fall in love with it. We may not ever see them again. And so we want to make sure we educate. And so Amber has that opportunity to go in and talk to them about their risk factors and get them scheduled back to come see us once a year. So it's a really great opportunity as a clinician to use our teaching and our education skills with those patients. Thank you, Kaylee. Um, all right, so these three questions kind of go together. Uh, how many patients do you typically see a day? Um, so what I'll throw in here before somebody else does, is that the average number of new patients across the network is about six new patients a day. And so, Amber, were you gonna, were you gonna say something? I was going to say pre and post COVID is a little bit different. Um, we did just get the updated guidelines of we were leaving the 15 minutes in between patients and things like that. So scheduling is a little bit, everything's starting to come back, get back to um, another change, as I should say. Um, but I would say for, I mean, I can be, you, you're all welcome to correct me, but you know, four in the morning, four in the afternoon would be an average, um, depending on what you're seeing, obviously, um, depending on if you're doing a lot of SRPs that day or, you know, a lot of perio maintenance or profies, so. Uh, as a recipient of an SRP, I can vouch that it means scaling and route planning, and I'm not a clinician, <laughs> so that, that proves that I, I know one, at least one thing about dentistry. Um, uh, anybody else wanna add uh, to the number of patients today? Uh, are, are we satisfied with Amber's response? I think it goes back to the clinical preferences. Sorry, Kaylee, I'm sure you're about to say pretty much probably similar to what I'm saying, but it goes back to the clinical preferences. What I love about our system, um, our computer system, and although it was a bear to kind of get used to, um, it with your clinical preferences, it also uses the smart scheduler, which I won't get into too gritty of the details here, but um, those that smart scheduler will only allow the team to schedule according to your preferences. So say you only want to see um, you know, a certain amount of profies a day or a certain amount of perio maintenance a day, as you guys know, those are the ones that kind of, you know, they're a little bit quicker than scale and root cleaning typically. Um, you can set that. So 
you have a lot of control. I think uh, Joel and Jan, you guys said it the best in the beginning where it's like you kind of run your own business. So I, I think that's something worth touching on. And just to, just to further define clinical preferences, clinical preferences are what the hygienist and the doctor have come together to define relative to how they're gonna manage these patients. So the doctor's involved with the hygienist defining these clinical preferences. Another term that, that'll help you with this would be the doctor's standard of care in their office. What, what do the hygienist and the doctor, what have they come together to define relative to their standard of care um, or their best practices? Um, those are all just other terms for clinical preferences. I just wanna make clear what that means. Thank you, Jen. Uh, there are several questions waiting regarding uh, COVID, which, which always seems to come up in these sessions. Um, I, I want to make sure we allot some time to that, but I'm just going to wrap up a few more questions here. Again, it's my job in this to make sure everybody's question gets uh, at least a chance. So we will definitely come to the COVID topic in just a minute. Um, uh, how many hygienists work in each location? Uh, and does Aspen Dental double book appointments? So Jen, maybe you can handle that one? So sure. So um, our goal is to have two hygienists uh, in each location. Um, by and large, the majority of our um, offices across the U.S. have um, one full-time hygienist and uh, a part-time hygienist. Um, it's our goal to get to two full-time hygienists uh, in each office. Um, what was the second part of that question, Joel? I uh, the, the question was, is it, is it common for Aspen Dental to double book appointments? No. <laughs> so while we, while we, so again, the hygienist has control uh, over their schedule. Um, and the hygienist is very involved with the office manager to make sure that they have a schedule that's functioning and works for them. So do we have an overflow column where we will move patients that we can't get confirmed or that are likely to no show? Yes, we definitely have the uh, overflow column. So that could create, if that patient shows up, a quote unquote double booking. But um, if that does happen, the whole team comes together to manage that appropriately so that we don't have um, patients waiting uh, in the reception area for, for their appointment. So, um, but typically we do not run a dual column double booked schedule which I've seen private practices and other DSOs do. Uh, that's not typically done here, no. Great, thank you. All right, let's uh, let's dive into the COVID questions. Um, and there's there's a lot of these. Um, so once again, I try to combine them all into one. Um, let's start here. Are you worried about a PPE shortage and what steps are being taken to make sure hygienists have the appropriate protective equipment? Well, I'll jump in on that um, question. And I think, yes, um, there's a worry in the profession in the US and the world about a PPE shortage. But fortunately for us, our procurement team jumped out ahead of this very, very, very early. And um, we uh, have done extremely well with uh, procuring enough PPE for our offices for quite some time. Our offices are all equipped with what is um, the CDC guidelines relative to, we have the uh, N95 masks or the KN95 masks available in our offices. We have the um, level three masks. We have the face shields uh, in our offices. Um, different states are requiring um, different types of PPE. Some states are requiring the head covers, the shoe covers, um, all of that uh, is available in our offices. Uh, for our hygienist, um, we are, by and large, most of our offices have available um, high volume evacuation for use of any aerosol producing um, technology. Um, for those of our offices where it is heavily backordered right now, um, for those of our offices that are dealing with some of the backorder issues, we're simply not creating aerosols. Um, our hygienists are um, relegated to hand scaling until we can get that in place. Um, but PPE is at the forefront of our mind. Um, it is probably a discussion we have daily, um, not only at the ADMI level, um, management level, but at the office level. Um, and we're staying ahead of it. We're staying in front of it. Um, we're fortunate because we are such a large organization 
um, we were able to, again, get out early and place a very large order. So at this point, we are well equipped with all necessary PPE. Great, thank you. That was an excellent answer, Jen, and it helps us address some of the other questions that are waiting. Um, can you speak? Um, can you speak in in detail about uh, the protocols that are in place to keep hygienists and patients safe from COVID, specifically with regards to wait times and the cleaning of uh, operator operatories and so on? Sure. So um, we're we are uh, following uh, the CDC guidelines, the CDC recommendations, and certainly the uh, uh, OSHA guidelines. Um, I will probably defer to Britt to talk about the actual flow within the practice, keeping in mind that every state is a little bit different. Um, so I have an overview of it through the states. But Britt, can you speak to your state? and what you guys are doing? Yeah, so um, I was just in an office uh, two days ago and the second I stepped into the office, they treated me just as if I was a patient. They took my temperature. Um, the girl actually at the front desk was new. She didn't know um, that I worked for Aspen. She asked me to wait in my car. I was like, I don't know how long I have to sit there, but, um, but so we are asking patients in, uh, this was in Illinois, um, to wait in their car until we're ready for their appointment and that and then we give them a call and let them know that we're ready for them socially distanced um in the wait room if they can't go out and wait in a car maybe they were dropped off by a, a car service or something looks like that but um they are socially distancing in the office a lot like they're stag staggering their lunch breaks um i know the doctor and the hygienist in their columns we've elongated the appointment times appropriately for that state um aerosol is definitely something of topic. We've also uh, managed to get, and I, I think it's, I, I have to share this story. Whenever I, right before pre, pre like right before COVID hit, I, I don't want to say pre-COVID because I was in Chicago uh, during a training and somebody was talking about, somebody on the executive leadership team was talking about COVID and a meeting for COVID. I'm like, man, we just can't stay in our lane. Like we're dentistry. What are we doing going to this co these COVID meetings? Like had I only known, I so uh, how naive I was, but um, just to kind of touch on Jan's comment about how proactive we were, um, we've been just as proactive with staying up with the state, the state guidelines um, as they change literally daily. So um, I would say each state is a little bit different, but we also were able to get in each office um, those high back evacuators that we went with. The, I don't want to say the brand, but we ended up getting stuff that um, really did reduce aerosol creation in each office and further conversations happening over that too, so. Thank you, Britt. Um, folks, I just put in the uh, in the Q&A chat, I just put in a link to uh, what we're calling the Smile Wide, Smile Safe Promise. Uh, and that gives you some uh, a little bit more information about some of the steps that we're taking. Uh, I can add just a little bit of color to Britt's description. Um, we've completely eliminated the need for uh, a sign-in uh, or, or, or paper paperwork uh, and all of that is happening electronically uh, and folks are being asked to stay in their car submit their paper electronically and then they're called in when they can immediately go into the chair uh, and so that, that's an effort to reduce contact between patients and other patients um, and and you might want to check out that link that's um it's got some useful information in there um, is there a procedure in place if a staff member tests positive for covid Kayla, do you want to go ahead with that? We have an entire task force team that is here to support us. So one of the benefits of having ADMI to help the office teams is every state's a little bit different on how we regulate um, if there is a positive in the office. And this task force team is there to answer all questions, to help with anything and everything. So um, that's one of the beautiful perks that we have. Thank you, Kaylee. Uh, well, we've been, I want to thank our panelists. We've been doing a great job on answering, you know, three questions for the price of one. Um, so let's talk a little bit about compensation and benefits. Um, are hygienists paid hourly? They are. Um, I'll take that one because I feel like I've been doing a lot of recruiting here lately. <laughs> um, hygienists, I always say, pay should not be a concern. I feel like we're incredibly competitive for the market um, with hourly pay. Hourly pay is guaranteed. You're guaranteed your hours. Your patient doesn't show up. We're not gonna ask you to clock out. We're not gonna tell you to go home. 
um, you're guaranteed your hours, you're guaranteed your hourly rate. We do have an incentive program, um, two different ways to incentivize as well. So I feel like working as an Aspen hygienist, you're compensated very, very well. I think that point about guaranteed hours is, is crucial. Uh, that's, I, I'm on the recruiting side as well. Um, it's, it's probably one of the questions we get most frequently because I think hygienists are tired of being sent home at the, end, at the middle of a day when they expected to work and when they had expected a certain amount of income only to discover that that's not happening. So uh, thank Absolutely. you for that, Kaylee. Um, that's a great answer. Um, can, can you talk a little bit about what's included in full-time benefits? Kaylee, is that one you can handle? Yeah, I love Thanks. this part. Um, I, so amazing health insurance, um, a great 401k program, short-term disability. Um, I had a baby two years ago and I was able to collect short-term disability while I was out on maternity leave. That's, that's a big deal, guys. That was amazing and super helpful. Um, we have a benefit program that is crazy good where you can get discounts with your cell phone bill, with buying a new car, they offer pet insurance. I just got my Sam's Club membership for free. So being such a large organization, we've really been able to collaborate with a bunch of different programs and get an amazing discount for things. Um, I feel like our benefit package is probably one of the best in the DSO industry right now. Thank you, Kaylee. Um... Jan, this question is for you specifically. Uh, you mentioned you switched from another DSO, uh, and the question here is why and is it better? Wow, that's an interesting <laughs> question. <laughs> uh, yes, so I uh, was with another DSO, a very, uh, it was a great experience. It was a good, great DSO. Um, I was with them 11 years, um, and I helped uh, build and grow their hygiene program. Um, why did I make the switch? Um, Aspen Dental offered me um, even more growth opportunity. I was kind of at the end of what I could accomplish, if you will, for that particular DSO. Um, and so I moved over to Aspen Dental by and large because of the dental hygiene support team that Aspen Dental had in place. Um, in my previous life, I, uh, I, I was the chair of hygiene and I was really a department of one. Um, and then I had some people that I worked with a little part time uh, to help support in the organization. Um, at Aspen Dental, the dental hygiene support team consists of about 25, I think there's about 25 of us now across the US that are all hygienists that are all there to um, mentor, work with, uh, train, develop the chairside hygienist to be the best that they can be to deliver the best quality of care that we can for our patients in our offices. Um, and so it became an opportunity for me to work with and lead um, such an amazing team here at Aspen Dental. Um, the collaboration that we have between all of us and the ideas and the growth that comes when you put 25 uh, like-minded, amazing, intelligent, creative people together um, has just been phenomenal. And that's why I made the change. And that's why I continue to say Aspen Dental is the best kept secret in the profession of dentistry. This is an amazing organization and I am so glad to be part of it. Thank you, Jen. Um, I mean, it's but that's my that's my heart, and that I'm I'm telling that, that any one of you call me up personally, email me, I'll sit down, I'll talk to you. This is a great place to be. Well, so that leads us nicely into the next question. We we get a question like this in almost every session that we do. Um, the question here says there's negative press and some reputation concerns out there about DSOs. What do I tell my friends if I want to join Aspen Dental? <laughs> I like that part. Um, so, uh, Kaylee, would you like to start that one? Yeah. Um, so, actually, where I grew up and I went to hygiene school, there's also another large DSO headquarters just right down the road from us. Um, my two roommates from college work for them, and I was the first one to say, hey, guys, I'm going to Aspen Dental. And they're like, what are you doing? Um, 
And so I think that I always tell people, you got to try the shoe on and see what fits. Some people prefer tennis shoes. Some people prefer high heels. You've got to determine what fits. Research it. Go in and shadow. Look at the opportunities. Talk to people. And whenever you figure out what shoe fits for you, be confident in that. Um, Aspen was the right fit for me and my roommates were always like, what are you doing? And now since I've come to the team, I've been here obviously for 10 years, um, a lot of them are curious and they wanna know more. And especially whenever we get into situations like COVID or different things, they're like, hey, how is your organization handling this? And whenever I talk about it, it they're blown away, absolutely blown away. So again, do your research, shadow, take the opportunity. It's well worth it. Can I add something to that as well? Um, Absolutely. I'm, re I'm really glad that I didn't listen to anybody else because um, I hear you. I mean, I've seen all the same bad press that all of you have seen. I've, And what I realized once I got here is if, the thing I, I try to explain to some of you know, folks that always, I get this question a lot. And, and I just say, if all the private practices in the United States were under one brand name, um, you know, that's a, that's a lot. We have a lot of offices under, under the name and not, not all dentists are the same, you know, not all practices are the same. Um, so it's the same idea that it, it depends on the practice. So just because maybe someone had a bad experience at one place. Unfortunately, when they write a review or um, tell a story, it then gets branded as, you know, all of Aspen, but that's actually not, that's not true. It's not truthful. That just might be that one practice, just like in private, it would be the same thing if something happened at a private practice that someone reviewed um, poorly. So I just, I really think, I really want people to give Aspen a chance. Um, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. I was very pleasantly surprised and I feel incredibly safe working here, supported. Um, and I, I feel like I'm giving, my standard of care is great and I'm giving the best care. So I just really encourage you to, you know, hear, hear what people say, but don't listen to the noise and go find out for yourself. And absolutely, it's not a fit for everybody, but it could be a fit for you, so. Well, thank you. Uh, and it looks as though um, Kaylee disappeared into the, the digital ether. Um, so you guys will have to carry her for the next few minutes. Uh, I want to be mindful that we've got about four minutes left. Um, there was a, a follow-up COVID question. Um, it actually looks like it's numerous questions. Uh, do you contact trace? Uh, do you shut down the offices to clean? Well, let's start with those two. Um, do we contact trace and, our, and uh, do we shut down the offices to clean them? Britt, do you want to take that one? Yeah, can you repeat the first question for me? The first we, question is, do you contact Trace, which is, uh, and I know this because it was recently done to me, essentially um, folks sign in with their name and it allows states uh, to track individual people's movements to determine at some point if they get sick, who they may have been in contact with. I'm going to have to go with, I don't know on that one. I do know that we're asking those questions. Um, I'm not sure if we use any sort of system to do so, but I do know we're, we are doing a pretty extensive um, questionnaire for each patient that is, before they even come into the practice. They are, you know, over the phone, we're asking those questions, asking if they or anybody that they know or have been in contact with, you know, has had um, COVID-19 and we haven't had any issues so far with any, you know, patients you know, getting those questions asked and being very, very thoughtful of the staff that's in there. Um, the second question, I'm sorry, I was hung up on the first one. Uh, our office is shut down to be cleaned. So perhaps- So I think that's where the extra time, sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead, Brett. Just the extra time that uh, we're taking for each patient. I do know that that's to allow for, you know, the, the additional steps that we're taking to make sure that everything's nice and sterilized, but Jan or Amber may know a little bit more in detail. So um, forgive me, the background noise, we are all working from home and my gardeners decided to show up. So I'll try and uh, keep my answer short. So we are gathering all appropriate information um, in our offices. So in the event we did have an exposure, 
then we would, our task force, our COVID task force, or our risk team would then um, provide um, the direction and what we need to do to manage that. Um, because we haven't had an exposure that I'm aware of, and Britt, you said you're not aware of an exposure uh, uh, to date at this time, um, I really don't know how the risk team or the task force would manage that. But this is part of the support that we have in the organization. Um, again, we're following all guidelines, and if there was a need, if we had an exposure and there was a need to take it to that next level, we have a whole team that would and could. Thank you, Jen. Um, so being, again, being mindful of the time, I, I usually like to end uh, on a fun question. Um, if you could summarize your experience at Aspen Dental, and I'm not asking you guys to sell the dream here, uh, but if you could summarize your Aspen Dental experience in, in one sentence, what would that one sentence be? Uh, Amber, we'll put you in the hot seat first. Oh, geez, uh, <laughs> that's, that's hard. Um, I feel, I oh, if I could, in one sentence, oh my goodness, okay. Well, I feel like I have grown, I've become a better clinician. Um, I feel supported and I feel like Aspen's my family. Um, and I didn't know I could have a family like this in, um, in what everyone, a corporate, you know, what's considered a corporate office, but it really is, it's, it's I have a, I just, I'm so happy here. And I feel like I can do everything I want to do. I'm really passionate about Chairside, and I foresee myself working here for a very long time. Thanks, Amber. Uh, Kaylee, before you disappear into the ether again. <laughs> <laughs> if y'all know me very well, I was going to make a joke about the Amazon Prime, Prime delivery guy was here. I had to go, like priorities, guys. <laughs> 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 um, no, so I think it's hard to put it in one sentence. I agree with you, Amber. That's tough. Um, but professionals empowering professionals. I've been um, enriched professionally, personally. The things that Aspen has provided me over the last 10 years, it's just not professionally, guys. It's the growth at home with my family. So yeah, one sentence, kind of a statement. <laughs> That's great. Kaylee, I absolutely love that you left the session to go get your prime packages. I love that. That's awesome. Uh, uh, Britt, go ahead. I would say kind of coming off of Amber's is I just love that I have this huge family. It's nationwide. Um, not only are they my family, but I've gotten some of my best friends in this organization and um, I will not get emotional about this, but it, it truly <laughs> is. Uh, it's, it means so much to me when we were out for COVID, you know, I, I missed everybody so much and that spoke a lot for that. So. Thank you, Britt. Jen, you have the, the final word. I think I could summarize it with one word and that would be fulfilling. Um, I think uh, I've had a long career in hygiene, 36 years again as a hygienist, played a lot of different, had a lot of different roles within the profession. And um, to Britt's point and to Kaylee's point, um, it, it's a real sense of family here. Um, I feel supported. I feel like I have the opportunity to support. I feel mentored. I feel like I have the opportunity to mentor. Um, so I would break it down to one word and say fulfilling. Well, thank you, Jen. Uh, I think that's a wonderful point to end on. Uh, it's one o'clock. Let me just point out, I do these sessions almost every week. Uh, we have had less than four or less than five people drop out of the session, um, which I honestly think is a testament to our panelists. Uh, thank you, Jan, Britt, Amber, and Kaylee. Thank you very much for your time. Folks, thank you very much for joining us. You have my email address. Please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any more questions. And if you'd like to get in touch with any of our panelists, please don't hesitate to reach out to me and I'll certainly connect you with them. Uh, thanks again, everybody, for your time. Uh, stay safe. Be well. Take care. Hi, guys. Thank you.